have you ever looked at the skills and asked yourself, do I really need a long shot or cutting shot? Well, I definitely did, and I asked myself this a few weeks ago, uh, and I went on a bit of a mad tangent trying to figure out the best way of calculating all this data and portraying it and putting it into an easily accessible place. So in the description, you'll find a spreadsheet uh, that contains all of the data I'm about to talk about. But if you're here, you probably want an answer right. Do you need long shot or cutting shot in your build? And the answer is maybe you need one, maybe you need the other, it depends on the weapon. So I'm going to quickly just go over the conclusion to this video now, because I presume you don't want to sit through me explaining a bunch of random bullshit for the next like five minutes. So um, if you're using the K4 or the B9, you need both skills. You need long shot and cutting shot. If you're using the AK, the K59, the SCAR, which is the VFS, uh, VF7S, uh, the M14, which is the SA A144, the FIC-22 TLR, the Rheinfeld 900S, the sniper rifle, or any of the pistols, so the Signature 40, 403, Strike 7, SP Model 11, uh, you only need long shot. If you are using the War 45, the new SMG in the DLC, or the FIC PC9, uh, you need cutting shot. And if you want to kill shields slightly faster, then you can take cutting shot on the VF7S, the FIC 22 TLR, the Rheinfeld 900S. Uh, you probably you probably actually want it on the Rheinfeld 900S because otherwise it takes two headshots to kill. Um, with cutting shot, it only takes one shot. Uh, the Compact 7 the Kasiga and the Bison, so both revolvers uh, that are currently in the game anyway, obviously future updates might add new weapons, this might become outdated. And only three weapons in the game uh, don't need either skill. Three weapons only need Edge, and they are the Ziv, Commando, the Compact 7, and the Bison. If you're using the Ziv, the Compact 7, or the Bison, you only need Edge. You don't need the long shot, you don't need long shot or cutting shot. Obviously, if you're using the bison with another weapon, you probably are going to need cutting shot or long shot. If you're using the Ziv or Compact 7 with any of the pistols or the Kasiga, uh, then you will probably need cutting shot or long shot as well. So unless you make a build with only the Compact 7 and the bison, then you uh, you need something else, right? Um, so. Uh, I'm assuming there will be a graphic on screen that I've put together. I'm doing the thing again where I record the voiceover before I actually edit anything, so I don't know how this is going to look. I am bad at visualising things. I don't know what this video is going to look like. So anyway, you see the, the conclusions on the screen. You have the information you need, uh, and in the description, like I said, there is a link to the spreadsheet that contains all of this there in more detail. Uh, and now I'm going to spend some time talking about it because I spent way too long putting this together. I'm going to fucking talk about my data and my data collection, all right? You can't stop me. So uh, it's worth noting that obviously I haven't listed shotguns here, uh, and that's because calculating the damage of shotguns at distance is hard because it's based on pellets and I have no idea how many pellets are going to hit the head, or how many pellets are going to hit the body, how many pellets are going to miss completely. So there isn't really an easy way of calculating damage with shotguns um, at distant, uh, beyond like point blank, because it's just inconsistent. There isn't really any easy way of calculating it. So that's why they're not included. And obviously, uh, if you read the description for long shot, then you know that long shot ignores the headshot penalty uh, with damage drop off. Uh, so the way uh, this is really complicated and weird and confusing, which I explain the conclusion first. Uh, but basically, the way damage works in this game is when you shoot someone, if they are within a certain distance to you, you will deal a full amount of damage. So if I take the AK, for example, uh, with the AK, if you shoot someone that is within, I believe, 15 meters, uh, you will do 40.2 damage. And then if they're between 15 and 30 meters, you will do 36.4 damage. So it isn't damage drop off, it's like damage steps. So each, each kind of like distance range 
has a specific damage value assigned with it. Um, and what makes this really awkward and confusing to try and figure out is headshot uh, damage has different distances. So I just said that um, if you shoot someone with the air cam and they are within 15 meters, you will do 40.2 damage. But the the highest headshot damage multiplier for the AK, which is times five, applies within 20 meters. So there's a five meter gap between 15 and 20 meters where you're actually dealing less damage, but you still have the full damage headshot damage multiplier, if you get what I mean. It's kind of confusing and like really awkward to try and explain, and it's probably why the UI in game is really bad and doesn't explain any of the weapon stats, because trying to explain the weapon stats is just it doesn't make a whole lot of sense like i understand what they were going with and i think the system works fine for what they're trying to do but actually trying to explain how the system works is really difficult if you get what i mean so that's why obviously like i said i did the conclusion first and i'm just telling you to look at the spreadsheet because the spreadsheet explains everything much simpler than i can try to do by sitting here and telling you how the damage in this game actually functions because it is kind of fucked not in a bad way, in because like I said, in, it makes sense the way the damage works. It's very intuitive, I think, and it it kind of makes sense. Except for with certain weapons like the Rainfield 900S, where if you go from 39 meters to 40 meters, suddenly it takes another headshot to kill because the damage drops in half. Uh, that's kind of weird and maybe less intuitive, but it like it plays fine in game. But yeah, you see what I mean, right? It's the way the numbers work and the numbers that they picked are really weird to try and explain, but when you play the game it feels right, you know? I say that, some people have complained that they don't like how the weapons in this game feel. I have no issue with it personally. Th some interesting conclusions that you can draw from this, draw from this data, like really, are that the AK is a perfect example, actually. I mentioned the AK earlier. The AK is a perfect example of why long shot and cutting shot are such weird skills when it comes to shots to kill. Uh, these are all assuming you're hitting enemies with headshots, by the way, uh, which might seem a bit presumptuous given that, you know, you might miss, you might accidentally hit the body uh, and so on, but given how hard this game incentivizes going for headshot kills and how big the head hitboxes are, I mean, like, I, I, I can look at my uh, my headshot stats on payday3.gg, which is a great website, by the way, you should absolutely use it, and my headshot stats with every weapon are over 100%. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means to have over 100% headshots, but I think it proves that uh, it's pretty easy to go for headshots in this game consistently, right? Uh, or maybe I'm just good at the game. I don't know. It means something. I don't know what ne what necessarily to draw from it, but it's also worth noting that um, tasers, naders, and techies, when they eventually roll out to other heists, all have the same health and armor values. So it takes the same number of headshots to kill all three of them. And the shield windows. I haven't actually done a whole lot of extensive testing on shields. I'm sorry, this might be completely wrong, but from my very limited basic testing of shooting shield windows, it seems like if you're using a gun with low armor pi with a low armor piercing value, so something like the Ziv or any of the pistols that aren't the SP Model 11, it will take twice as many shots. It basically doubles the number of shots you need to take to kill the shield. So with the Ziv, for example, it takes nine headshots to kill a shield. I haven't actually tested this. Again, sorry if it's wrong. It might not, might, it might not be wrong, but from my understanding, if you were to shoot the shield window with a Ziv, which, I mean, why are you using a Ziv to begin with? But besides the point, it would take nine shots to break the shield window and then nine shots to kill the shield with headshots. Um, so it doubles the amount of shots it takes if you're shooting at the window. But if you're using a weapon like the AK, where, which has high armor, armor penetration, the shots go straight through the glass, so it only takes six shots, which is the same regardless of if you shoot the shield in the head with or without, you know, the glass, if you shoot them from behind or in front. So some weapons seem naturally worse at killing shields because you need to break the window first, whereas other weapons, like the Scar, just shoot through the glass and ignore the, gla the glass completely. Yeah, a bit of a weird thing, and again, I haven't tested it extensively. I did some very basic testing with, I think it was the Signature 403 is the only weapon I've actually tested it with. It might be wrong, that's just my very quick, vague hypothesis based on uh, the information that I've seen. 
based on what I've observed from playing the game. Shield windows need more testing, first of all, but also uh, you just shouldn't really try shooting them with low armor, pen armor penetration. Yes, armor. I was going to say armor piercing. Both technically work, I think. But low AP weapons, basically. The problem is you don't know the AP values by playing the game because the game doesn't tell you. Because again, all of this game's weapon stats are very convoluted in terms of how they work, but it makes complete sense when you play the game and it feels intuitive. But when you actually start looking into it, the values are all weird and don't really... It's very hard to get your head around. So I'm just not going to bother trying to explain it because it's unnecessary. It's not... It goes beyond the scope of this video. I could make an entire other video just talking about how damage is calculated and how damage is applied to enemies because it's so unnecessarily complicated to get your head around and I, it's not... It's not worth explaining right now, okay? But the point is, shoot people in the head, it will kill them. If you want to do it fast, if you want to do it efficiently, uh, you may need some combination of long shot and cutting shot. If you're using the Catherine B9, you need both. You absolutely need both because it, um, it gives you the minimum shots to kill at 10 to 30 meters. Uh, 10 to 25 with the B9, but 10 to 30 with the Carthor. Again, all of this information is in the spreadsheet in the description. Just look at the spreadsheet if you want the more in-depth, detailed information. But yeah, I also wrote a script. I, 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 if, if you're wondering how I actually uh, got these values and calculated this, I used a program that I wrote to effectively simulate the number of headshots uh, that it takes at different distances. The way that I implemented the script was very very straightforward and very basic because I just kind of needed something that did the calculations and then I could just enter all the data manually. Um, so it isn't very user intuitive and it's not very easy to use. It's at least foolproof. It doesn't crash <laughs> and it's pretty efficient at like doing what it is, but you need to get the data that you're entering into it from somewhere else. Because basically you enter the damage value, you enter the headshot multiplier, and then you enter the armor penetration value, and it will tell you the number of headshots to kill every enemy with those values that you provided. Now the problem is, each weapon has like multiple damage values and multiple headshot values, so obviously you have to enter every combination, every valid combination rather, of damage and headshot multiplier. And if you want to work out how many headshots it takes to kill with long shot, you need to do the same thing again, but you need to use the highest headshot multiplier instead of the whatever the current headshot multiplier should be. So if you're, for example, if you're trying to do a B9 at, I don't know, 50 meters, let's say the B9 at 50 meters, let me just quickly pull up the stats for the B9 at 50 meters. Uh, the B9 at 50 meters would be 14 damage uh, with a two times headshot multiplier. So you would do the 14 damage, but if you're trying to do the long shot damage, uh, instead of using the two times headshot multiplier, you would use the five times headshot multiplier because five times is the maximum headshot multiplier. It's, like I said, it's really not intuitive, the program, because I just kind of wrote it for my own purpose and then uploaded it to GitHub afterwards. It works, it does what I need to, it gets the data. It could be more efficient, it could be faster, more streamlined, whatever. It does what I need and I've been able to make this video for you, which is all I really cared about. And the main reason I'm making this video was to satisfy my own curiosity because like I said, I was wondering whether I actually needed long shot or cutting shot on certain weapons um, because I thought I might have needed cutting shot on the bison. But you don't actually need cutting shot on the bison. You only need cutting shot on the bison if you want to kill shields at 15 to 30 meters or 30 to 45 meters and it takes like two shots less. So you don't really need cutting shot on the bison, but if you're using most of the weapons in the game, you might have cutting shot anyway. Like for example, if you're using the sky, you probably still want cutting shot because it reduces the number of headshots by one on shields. Um, that is all it does. Uh, unfortunately, long you, long shot kind of is better for the sky than cutting shot is, but you get the idea, right? I feel like I'm rambling. Am I rambling? Are people gonna watch this far into the video? Are people still here for me rambling about weapon stats? I don't know. I, I feel like I should stop talking and end recording this at this point because I feel like this has gone on a bit too much. 16 minutes. Oh fuck it, 16 minutes. Uh, right, I'm gonna try and figure out a way of editing this down. I might not actually. I might just upload the whole thing and just upload my mad ramblings about this because I, God forbid, I tried to figure out a way of editing this into um, like um, a more concise uh, video where I kind of just like did stuff but uh, 
I, I figured the best way to, for Mint to make this video would be to just vomit out the main information that you need at the start and then just spend some time talking about other like tangentially related things for the rest of it, uh, which is what I've done, as you can tell. 